Hey there, it's Jim from Janku, and today I want to take a look at using regular expressions to find a specific line of text in a file and then wrap it with other characters. So to show you exactly what I'm talking about, I have this file over here called component.js. This is a JavaScript file, and this is essentially what Svelte would push out as a server-side rendered JavaScript. That's not really that important, but what is important is I want to look for all these import statements here, and then I want to comment them out. Now, one of the challenges is that we're not sure if it's a single line import statement like this one or if it's a multi-line import statement like this. So what we really have to do is we have to find a way to identify it as an import statement versus any of these other types of statements here. And then I want to comment it out by starting with a multi-line comment at the front of it and ending after the semicolon here with a multi-line comment like this. So this is actually an example of a multi-line comment at the top. So for this first example, what I'd want it to look like is something like this. Start with a multi-line comment come down, and the multi-line comment. For one of these in here, I would do the same thing. So start with a multi-line, go to the end, end with a multi-line comment. And I want to do that for each one of these items, even though they might have some different text within them. So how might we go about doing that? Let's just back this up. I'll switch over here to my main.go file. So this is the file that's going to run everything for us. I'll start by adding package main and our main function. This is the first function to run in Go. And then I'm going to use the IO util package here, and I'm going to read a file. And in this case, we just want to read that component.js file, which is in the same directory that we're in right here. So we'll grab that, and then I'll get the output here. And if you hover over this, you see that this actually returns a byte array. So we're going to say JS bytes is what we'll name our variable, and then we'll get an a possible error here and we'll sign it like this and then let's just check for our error so if error is nil then we'll do a format dot print line of the error save that and you'll see that it actually has come up here and it's automatically imported our different packages so we're using the format package here to print the line it imports that and we're also using the IOUtil to read the file and it's importing that right here. Now let's come down here and let's actually just also print the JS bytes that we get. So let's do a format print line. And now we're going to want to convert these bytes into a string so we can do that by typing string and then passing the JS bytes variable here. If I control C and then save that, and let's just open up our terminal here and run go build. And you can see it created our binary here. It called it regex because that's the name of the folder that I put this all in. And then let's just try to execute the regex binary. So if I expand that, you can see that it's printing out everything that we had in that file here. So it just is writing it completely like it was before. The import statements aren't commented out. You can see all the text that was originally in that file over here. So we're successfully reading that file in, we're checking for any errors, and then we're just printing it out. Now we have to get to the point where we actually want to change what's in this file so we have this commented out. This is where regular expressions will come in. So we can come down here and we can access the regular expression package here by doing regexp. And then we're going to use a method called mustcompile. And this is what we're going to do to find our pattern so we can identify import statements even if they vary with the text that happens within them. So I'll start with the backtick syntax right here. So we know our import statements are going to start with the word import, so I can type import here. We want to check for that syntax. Now let's come back over here. We also notice that the next thing that we're going to see here is a space character. After each one of these imports, we see a space here. So if we switch back over, I can match for that space character like this. So now we're seeing Give me everything with the word import and then a space after it. And now it gets a little tricky. So we might have some text here and then a from statement, but we also might have multiple lines of different text here and then a from statement. So we have to check for either of these scenarios. It's easier to check for the single line one. So let's take a look at that first. So we have the import, the space, then we have any number of characters here and then a space in the word from. So let's come back here and let's add some brackets here. And let's say any character, so star dot, the word from, and then, so we have our word from, then we have the potential for a bunch of other characters, 
and then a semicolon. So let's come back over here and let's do another star dot and then a semicolon. Now we could get even more specific with this. We could say we're going to have the import space, bunch of characters, then a space again, then the word from, so we could account for that. Let's come here, let's wrap these any characters in their brackets. Let's add another space check here, the word from. We know there'll be another space after the word from, the keyword, and then we can check for any characters and then finally end it with a semicolon. So that should get all of our single line imports there. Now this returns a regular expression that we can use to find our string. So let's just assign this to a variable. We'll call this import statement. And then we can use this import statement regular expression to find different matches. So for instance, let's grab our import statement and we should have methods available to us so we can do something like find all string here. And we'll just run this on the string version of our JS bytes that we were getting from the file that we read above. So it's the same expression here that we were printing down here. So this whole string. And we'll run this find all on the JS bytes. And you can see here that this returns an array of strings as well. So let's just call this found statements. And then let's do a loop down here. We'll do a for and we'll say for each found statement in a range of found statements. Let's just do a format print line of the found statement. And let's just come up here and actually let's get rid of this print line up here so we don't print all of the file that we read into our memory there. Let's just save this, come down, we will clear our back scroll, and then I will do a go build. Looks like I didn't pass enough arguments to the find all string method. So if I come up here, it looks like it's looking for an int as well. I'll pass negative one here so we find all instances of this. And again, I'll just save this come back down here, I'm gonna build again, and this time I'm going to run the regular expression. Now I'm getting an error down here when I run this, so if I scroll up a little bit, you see here that it's saying we're missing the argument to repetition operator, so this little star here for repetition, we're missing an argument for that up here. That's because I wrote this incorrectly. This dot should actually appear before the star in both of these, so it's dot any character repeating any number of times. Over here, the same thing, let's do an any character repeating any number of times. Let's come here, let's save that. Let's come back down and let me build one more time. Run this again. Okay, that's a little better. Let's see what we have here now. You see that we're getting our import statements printed here. And then we get this big jumbled thing down here. Now what's actually happened here is if I go back up to the component.js file, you'll see that we have this CSS map if we scroll over on here, there is a bunch of import statements in this here. So it makes this big confusing text chain here. So for now, just to simplify this example, I'm gonna just get rid of this CSS thing here so we can focus on just the import statements that are a little more simple above there. I'm just gonna save this. Let's come down here and let's run this one more time. Okay, now we just get the import statements here. But you'll notice that we're only getting the single line import statement. So we get the head, the nav, the footer, and the make title. Those look great, but we're not getting this multi-line import here. So we still have to count for that up here. So this is where things get a little bit tricky. Let's try to walk through this. So we have this whole statement right here, starting with an opening bracket and going to a closing bracket here. And this is matching the any characters space from keyword space any characters in the semicolon. So again, that's any of the characters, a space right here in between these, the keyword from a space right here and then any amount of characters and then a semicolon. So it's matching that. So up here, instead of doing that, we need to stay right from the import. We have a space and then we have likely a bracket. Then any number of characters, new lines, any number of characters, new lines, any number of characters. And we're going to keep checking just new lines because this could be maybe five lines. It doesn't have to just be three. So we're gonna have to say any number of new lines with a bunch of characters. 
until we see a closing bracket, a space from keyword, and then very similar to what we had previously. So let's hop back over here. In this expression here, in the in closing brackets, I'm going to go to the end here, and I'm going to put a straight up and down line pipe character. So that's giving us an or statement. It's saying we're going to match the single line keywords here, or we're going to look for this multi-line output. Now, the easiest thing to do here would actually be, instead of checking for this curly bracket, we just want to check for any amount of characters in a new line until we see this here. That will allow us to check this line the same way that we would check the remainder of this line here, which is basically a curly bracket and then a new line. So back over here, we can do that by running something like this. We're going to do dot star for any number of new characters, and then a backslash n to say a new line. So any number of characters into a new line. And then we want to denote that this could repeat any number of times. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put these curly brackets and we'll say zero comma. And that's going to allow us to repeat this for any number of lines. So we're starting with the zeroth and we're going to any number here. Just to be safe here, let's wrap this expression here in curly brackets itself. So on the other side of this or statement, we're wrapping, let me just zoom out here so we can see what we're grabbing. This whole thing is just one solid statement, which is the other half of an or inside of a larger statement here. But after we've checked for any number of characters with new lines, let's now check for our closing curly bracket. And I have to escape that, so I'm doing a backslash closing curly bracket. Now that's matching on this closing curly bracket here, right? So we did any number of characters, new line, any number of characters, new line, any number of characters, new line, any number of characters, new line. Now we're seeing the closing curly bracket, so that's the escaped backslash curly bracket. Then we want to space our from keyword and like we did before on the single line. So let's just do that. So now we're checking for our space character. I'm going to do curly brackets here, backslash s for a space character. Then we have the from keyword. Then we're going to have another space character here, so backslash s. And then we're going to have any number of characters, so dot, star, and then a semicolon. So this should match the beginning import statement. It looks for a single line from or a multi-line from, and then we run that over here on the file that we're reading in up here, so the JS bytes. We're running that on the JS bytes and we're trying to find every match of that. Every time we find a match, we're putting it into this array of strings, and then we're looping through the array of strings and we're just printing the import statements. So let's just try to run this and see if this works for us. So make sure it's saved, come down here, and I'm going to go build and then run the regex. Okay. So now we have this multi-line import statement up here. It's coming down matching this. Then we have these single line import statements here and those all seem to be working. All right, let's come back up here. So we're only partway there. So now we have our scenario set up where we're matching all the import statements. That's good, but we're not wrapping them in a comment yet. So how might we go about doing that? I'm going to start by just commenting out all this printing stuff down here. So defining all the import statements and the looping through them and printing them out. I'm going to comment that out for now. Now I'll come back up here to our import statement regular expression here. And I'm going to run a replace all string. So this is going to match our pattern up here. And for each one of these matches, it's going to replace it with something. So one thing we could do here is every time we match it, we could just replace it with an empty string. And that would essentially be deleting it from our file. So let's take a look at that real quick. So again, I'm going to pass in the string version of the JS bytes. And I'll just replace it with an empty quote. So what we're going to do here is we're taking this string version of this file. And every time we're finding this pattern up here, we're going to replace it with empty quotes. And we'll assign that to adjusted JS, we'll call it. And let's just do a format print of the adjusted JS. Let me just save that. And let's come down here and let's try to run it. So we got to build. And then we try to run it. And so now we're getting the full file here. And let's just expand this so we can see what's going on. So you see here, there's all this blank space at the top, but we have the file, we have the comment at the top. And then this is where the import statements used to be here, but they've been 
put as empty strings. Then we go back into the normal JS that was there before. So that's fine, but we actually want those import statements to remain there, but we just want them to be comments. So how can we go about doing that? The key here is using replacement patterns that are available for the regex methods like replace all. So for instance, if we wanted to get the actual found string that we found here, which is different for each one of these, right? They're all import statements, but each import statement is different. And we want to comment each one of these individually. What we can do here is we can use the dollar sign zero replacement pattern to actually wrap this. So let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to use back ticks here and I'm going to start the replacement with a opening multi-line comment and a closing multi-line comment. Let me just save that to show you what it looks like right now. If I were to come in here and run this again, it's going to show the exact same thing, but in all the places where the imports used to be, we just have these multi-line comments, but we don't actually have the individual import statement that we started with. But if we come up here and we use the dollar sign zero replacement pattern, this will be the actual string that we found using this regex above. So what we're doing here is we're opening with a comment here, and then we're putting the original found string here, which is the replacement pattern with the dollar zero, and we're doing the closing comment here. So now if I save this, I come down and I build, and I run the regular expression again, we should now have a string here. So it has the import statements, they're enclosed with comments now, and each import statement is exactly how it was previously, but it's put inside a comment like this. You can also get different parts of the found string. So for instance, if we do dollar sign one instead of dollar sign zero, we come down here and we build this. You can see that we're getting a space for each one of these. Let's come up here, let's try this again. Let's do dollar sign two. build, run. You can see we're getting the second half here. We're missing the import keyword, but we're getting the second half here. So you can play around with these different replacement patterns to get different parts of the string that you're matching with your regular expression. And it allows you to do more interesting sorts of things. So in this simple example, we're just wrapping a comment, but you might want to do something like wrapping HTML or something more complex than that. Now, if you want to bring this all the way home, one thing we could do is we could actually write this file back to our file system. So let's come back up here. Let's change this back to dollar sign zero to get the full import statement here. And let's do a couple of other things. Let's stop converting these bytes into a string. So let's come over here. Let's get rid of this and let's just pass in the bytes here. Now this is going to throw a little bit of error because we're using a method here called replace all string. Luckily we have another method available to us called replace all. Let's just use that. And you can see that it takes bytes here. So we're replacing all on that. And that also returns bytes. So now our adjusted JS here is bytes. And then we could come down here and we could do an IO util. And we could write the file instead of reading the file like we were doing up here. Now we're writing the file. You can see that it wants here a string representation of where the file is located. It wants the data and bytes, which is what we have above. And then just wants some file permissions here. So let's call our new string. We'll just say this is new component dot JS. Our data here is our adjusted JS bytes. We'll just give it 755 file permissions. Or you could even come up here and use os.mod perm. I'll save that. Let's get rid of this printing. We'll save this. Let's come down here and let's clear our back scroll. Let's build this one more time. We can see here that we're trying to use a string instead of our bytes. So let's just come up here and let's just write a byte array and put this inside it like this. Let's save that one more time. We'll come down here, we'll build, and then let's run our regex. And you can see that it created a new file over here on the left, the new component JS. Let's click into that and hey, look at here. We have our new file with our commented out import statements and the rest of our file the way it originally appeared. Let's walk through this one more time just from the top to the bottom to make sure we solidify the understanding. So let's come back over here to our main file. What we're doing here is we're starting by reading a file on our file system. That's this component.js file that we had over here that had some JavaScript information in it. Actually, sorry, it's this one here 
the original file, and had some JavaScript information. We pull that in as bytes, and then we create a new regular expression by picking the match that we want to have here. So we identified an import statement that can be single line or with this little pipe character, a multi-line import statement here, which is a little complicated, but hopefully you're following along with me. Basically what it was saying is any number of characters here and then a new line that repeats as many times as possible until we see this closing curly bracket, a space, the keyword from, a space, and then a bunch of characters, and then a closing semicolon. That's what it's doing there. So we get that regular expression here, which we called import statement. And then what we do is we use import statement right here to do a replace all method on the JS bytes that we read in from the, the file here. So we got those JS bytes up here and we're replacing bytes in there. So we're using this syntax here. We had to convert our string over to a byte array. And we're saying, let's take the replacement for what was found. Let's wrap it in a comment like this and then let's replace that within this original JS and let's save that as a variable called adjusted JS here. Now that doesn't live in the file system at the moment, it's just in memory. So what we have to do at the end is use the IOUtil package here to write the file to a new file that we're naming new component.js. We're passing in the adjusted bytes here. So this is the new content that we want. And then we're just setting some file permissions here using os.modperm. Hopefully this gets you going with understanding a little bit about how regular expressions in Go works. Matching a string that is kind of dynamic like these import statements is a little bit challenging, but once you get used to how some of these things work, it becomes easier. If this video helped you understand any of these topics, please give it a thumbs up just so YouTube knows to share it with other folks. And stay tuned to our channel for more content like this in the future. All right, thanks. Take care.